thank you very much for waiting. Uh, now we can start. Um, I can say hi, everyone, officially. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jocelyn, and I'll be your host for today's exciting webinar. Before we begin, some practical information. Uh, this live feed will be recorded for the purpose of sharing it on our YouTube channel, so it may help you and others as a guide later. I recommend you all to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you may not miss any of our content uploaded. Uh, you will also get the opportunity to uh, interact with our guest and ask your questions related to the program at the end of this webinar on Q&A function on Zoom. Please remember to write your questions at Q&A function and not on chat, please. Um, we have an interesting topic today, which is engineering management, which is a great opportunity for all those engineers who want to uh, take leadership roles uh, or managerial roles in engineering-focused companies. Uh, I will not say so much about it, and so let's stay tuned and uh, learn more and dig deeper into the topic. And welcome our guest, Dr. Ulf Larsen Olaysen. Welcome, um, Ulf. How are you doing? Oh, thank you, Yasim. I'm uh, I'm doing uh, quite good here, actually. It's uh, uh, <clears throat> we have been working with this, uh, uh, developing this program now for 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 quite some time, and we are getting close to 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 launching this new version of the engineering management program that I hope to tell you a little bit about during the uh, during this session. Wonderful. Uh, so today's format is more like a panel discussion where you are the only one in the panel and I have prepared some questions for you that can help our potential students understand our program in depth and its uniqueness and what they may achieve after finishing this. So naturally, my first question is to uh, please tell us about yourself, who you are and what inspired you to lead the engineering management program. Well, yes, thank you. Uh, so, so uh, as uh, Yasim said, my name is Ulf, and I'm an uh, uh, associate professor, here, assistant professor here at Jibs. Um, my background is in uh, is actually in accounting and uh, management control, uh, which could be understood more or less as uh, as part of the management topic that we will be will be taught, uh, that we will be uh, teaching uh, in this program. So uh, besides that, as my background then as a researcher and a, a teacher uh, in, our, uh, in different programs here at JIBS, I'm also the program director for the engineering management program. Uh, being the, uh, the program director is a, is a quite important uh, role to perform uh, in a system as we apply here at JIBS, uh, because I more or less have a kind of an overarching responsibility for the quality of the program. So there are a lot of different uh, kind of quality considerations that we need to take uh, take into consideration uh, when we when we uh, develop, but also when we deliver our programs to our uh, students. So it's uh, it's on one side it's uh, it's about the students, on the other side it's also about uh, the the research connection of of what we do in the programs, and finally there's also this kind of external responsibility that we need to perform here because, I mean. Uh, I would like to think about uh, the master programs or, or all the programs that we deliver also on a bachelor level. Uh, we deliver them for, for certain type of uh, what we could refer to as customers. Uh, but these customers are not, uh, are not perhaps US students, individual students. Uh, our customers is actually to meet the need of, 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 of your future employers. So we are here to deliver graduates of, of certain types. Uh, and if we look at the kind of the, the business uh, society and the business world that we have today, uh, we, we often hear when we talk uh, uh, with people in these companies that they are trying to break up organizational uh, silos. So people who are working in one area and others working in another, these are kind of silos in these organizations. And they want to break up these uh, uh, silos to work more integrated. Uh, and if you want to work more integrated, then you actually require a certain type of thinking. And I like to think about that as kind of interdisciplinary thinking. Mm. Uh, and that is exactly where this engineering management program comes in. Mm. So, so we kind of address here uh, graduates with a, with a very strong foothold in their engineering backgrounds. And then we provide them with knowledge in, in management. Mm. Uh, 
that could be used to break up these uh, these silos. Uh, so it's a uh, so that's the kind of the a very yeah. short answer to your question, but that's a, <laughs> a rather big uh, inspiration for me and and also for my colleagues working with this program because it is a different uh, different group of students that you work with when you work with absolutely engineers absolutely how do we best define engineering management and its importance in the age of uh, especially fourth industrial revolution yeah that's a i think that's a great case in point here what i was trying to 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 describe here is breaking up these uh, silos i mean the the kind of the the, the fourth industrial relation uh, in many ways would kind of relate to uh, different type of interactions. We could talk about machine to machine interactions, but we also need to think about machine interaction with humans. Hmm. So if people working with machines don't know to interact with humans, well then that is a, that is a very kind of problematic area here. Uh, and this is just happening right now. So everywhere uh, we need to start developing, how should we kind of, explore and understand these new developments where uh, where you know machine learning ai and all these things come into to real business life and i think that is a, a situation when it perhaps it is not only enough to have the uh, this kind of engineering competence that you would require in engineering develop uh, in an in, in, in engineering education but the fourth uh, industrial revolution then would uh, kind of require us to explore uh, in depth how the engineering knowledge actually would relate to human behavior. And, mm -hmm. and if we are talking about human behavior, we talk about uh, organizations, we talk about ethical consideration, perhaps even political considerations. Uh, and I think that is kind of the, the, the key here, what engineering management can bring to the table uh, is a contribution where you get more kind of social science understanding to engineering because we need to break these silos in order to to actually um uh, actually develop uh, the the organizations and the business uh, companies that we are uh, aiming to provide with graduates here thanks very much for a very brief answer about that question my uh, next question is also a bit connected with this. Um, and, you know, I, I understand Sweden has a strong and successful manufacturing uh, or slash engine, uh, industrial engineering sector that accounts for roughly 20% of the country's GDP. Uh, that is about 117 billion US dollars. Uh, does this create a strong demand for the experts um, for like, like engineering management uh, professionals? Well, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, I mean, the short answer here is yes. I mean, there is a, a huge demand for people working in uh, what we refer to here as uh, engineer-focused companies. And as you say, it's a it's a it's a rather big uh, kind of chunk of the uh, 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 of the uh, uh, the Swedish industrial sector uh, are based on uh, kind of well-known blue ship corporations uh, with an engineering type of mm -hmm. uh, background here. Uh, so, I mean, there are certain types of innovations uh, that are quite uh, quite uh, historically, I mean, developed quite a long time back in history, which still forms the foundations of these very big uh, companies today. Uh, and what we had done is that we have been trying to, to talk with people working in, uh, in this engineering focused companies to see what type of demands they would actually have uh, for, 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 for graduates. Uh, and they talk a lot about how these companies are organized. They are organized in kind of project-based, more temporal type of organizations. And in such uh, organizational settings, they, they talk a lot about the importance of communication. Uh, so in order to kind of, again, break up these silos, but it's also not only silos between different type of, of teams and different type of projects, but also in relation to kind of an overarching uh, managerial function performed in these companies. So they, they are looking for graduates that can communicate with engineers because mm -hmm. they are engineers. They know the, the, yeah. the basic science here, but they also need to be able to, to uh, communicate with people in management. Who often talk the the language of of management or finance? Yeah, 
Uh, so that is uh, uh, that is what we in intend to do with this program, uh, with this uh, engineering management program, um, and I think that uh, the ability to communicate in both the language of engineering and the language of management is uh, uh, are kind of key skills looked for uh, in many of these engineering focused companies. Our program is uniquely designed uh, around modules. Uh, can you explain uh, what they are and what our students will achieve with them? Yes, that's also kind of a, a a very good question here. I think, I mean, you can also you can always think about uh, engineering as an uh, as a very applied science, but then on the other hand, and my background is in in management, so so I would say that also management is a very applied science. So it's it's applied to to the practice of of, of business corporations. Uh, but it also has been quite uh, siloed in its way of, of, of structuring this area. So we have people who work in marketing. We have people who work with, uh, with, uh, with accounting, some people working with finance, others with human resource. So we have different type of, of, of silos here. Uh, and, and, and when we look at a, uh, uh, like a top-up program, uh, which an engineering management program is, we also need to break up the silos of management here. Uh, and I think that is where the modules come in here. So instead of having a separate course in, in for instance, management accounting, and then have another one in marketing, well, perhaps we also need to integrate the thinking of management here so that we actually see that the, the, the silos of management, mm. they are there for practical reasons, but in, in kind of a real business setting, people in marketing need to, to, to speak with people in human resource who need to speak with people in finance. Uh, and that is why we have uh, kind of structured this around uh, you could you could say five or six modules depending on how you count here. Uh, so we first uh, start off with what I refer to as a pre-study module here, which is a shorter module that is actually taken before the program starts. Uh, so it's an online module which is intended to onboard students from very different and diverse engineering areas. And then we try to create some kind of uh, level playing field here. Mm -hmm. So if we have uh, students, for instance, who come from an engineering program in, uh, in supply chain, well, they have certain types of, of understanding of what business uh, economy management and different type of concepts are. But they also need to, 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 to learn other aspects of that. But then we could also have uh, students coming from, from, from well, nuclear science or architecture who doesn't really have the, the, the same, uh, same pre-knowledge uh, in, 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 in management or in business life altogether. So the, there is a kind of a, a, an attempt with this pre-study module to level the playing field so that when the real program actually starts, well, then uh, we have the more or less the same understanding on what business is and how it's financed and how it's operated and with purposes uh, and how it relates to, to society. And um, then we have the, the second uh, module, which actually starts the program. When we will start the program in September, uh, we will start with what I, we refer to as an uh, introduction to engineering management. So then we will cover very diverse uh, areas of management talking about finance, accounting, marketing, trying to uh, to set the, the scene for that. Uh, the third module, uh, which is uh, kind of talking about leadership, which we have identified when we have spoken with, uh, with key external stakeholders of the engineering management program, that there is a real need to, to, to learn about leadership and how leadership uh, uh, could be actually practiced, which gives a kind of a focus here on, on, uh, on con communication. So how do we communicate within the organization? Uh, how do we work in teams? What do we need to know about project management, for instance? Um, the fourth uh, uh, module here is, uh, uh, is linked to the, uh, uh, the kind of the focus area of JIBS. Uh, and I will return to that, I think, when we talk about the, the school. But uh, the school is kind of uh, rather well known for its uh, 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 research in entrepreneurship, uh, trying to bridge the, 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 the kind of theoretical uh, knowledge of entrepreneurship into real business life would be to focus on innovation. Uh, 
Mm. Uh, and that is what we do in that module. So we try to take the the, the school book entrepreneurship out into to, to practice and, and work with, uh, with innovation. Uh, the fifth uh, module then would focus on, uh, on, on, on writing the actual master thesis. I mean, that's the actual proof that you are a master in engineering management is that you write the master thesis. There are certain kind of requirements that are necessary for that in terms of how to, to do research, how, ethical considerations, research methods, and so on. And then actually writing this uh, uh, applied master thesis then. Uh, finally, uh, we do believe that there is a, a need for uh, for trying to, to situate the knowledge that you have gained throughout the different modules in a more practical uh, setting. Uh, that's why we end the program with an internship module. Mm. We would actually practice the, uh, uh, the things that we have been doing throughout the courses or the modules before. Uh, really interesting. Um, and this was quite helpful actually to really understand how the engineering management program is designed. Uh, now you touched a little bit upon, uh, you know, the school strength. So can you tell us a bit about the jibs and what makes it unique? Yes. So so when we talk about jibs or Jönsping International Business School, it's 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 actually quite a, a young institution. I mean, many university institutions uh, they talk about how old they are. They were founded in the 15th century and so on. But JIBS was actually founded in 1995. So uh, it has a rather short history. Uh, but during that rather short history, uh, quite a few things has been accomplished, I would say. Uh, so when it was founded, it was founded in the region of, of, of Jönköping, trying to see what is the needs uh, for, for business society in this region. And what are the strengths they actually have and how could that be developed? So the, the kind of the, the focus areas uh, all the way from the start has been basically on entrepreneurship mm. and internationalization. Mm. So uh, we need to have that strong basis for the uh, for, for our uh, uh, both our research and our education to be uh, uh, to be talking about entrepreneurship, trying to be innovative, trying to do new things. Uh, and then to get the local business society to become more international. And it could be more international by uh, attracting people from outside the region and outside of Sweden, outside of Europe, to actually come to Jönköping uh, to be part of an international environment. Mm -hmm. And doing that, uh, I think they quite early on realized that if you want to work with internationalization, well, then you need to prove the quality uh, of the uh, of the education that you provide uh, in an international manner. Uh, so uh, in, in, in relation to other uh, uh, universities in Sweden, uh, JIBS was very early on with working with international accreditations. Uh, and I'm very proud to say that JIBS is, is, uh, uh, has been uh, accredited by both the QIS and the ACSB, uh, which is the two major uh, European and American uh, organization for accrediting uh, management education uh, and while doing this working with quality and I mean as I said from the start I'm the program director of the engineering management program which is a part of this quality work that we do we need to have certain processes in place uh, ensuring quality uh, throughout the whole education and, and I think this has paid off quite good for JIBS uh, both with the accreditations but then uh, in the last few years, actually being uh, recognized by the Financial Times, uh, which is the kind of the major ranking system for business schools, uh, where JIBS has been uh, in the top 100 uh, uh, European business schools for the last uh, uh, four years now, I think. Yeah. Uh, and during each year, which we have been ranked by the Financial Times, actually getting a better and better position. And uh, I think we came in, in place number 69 this year, yeah. which yeah. is uh, uh, something that we could really be uh, be proud, proud of because yeah. we've been kind of acknowledged internationally that what we are doing here is is uh, uh, following international quality standards. How, how close is this program designed with the industry and what is the balance of research and application? Well, thank you. I mean... <laughs> 
as I said, this is the, the when we deliver the engineering management program uh, this autumn, it will be the first one uh, with setup. But it doesn't mean that we haven't been working with engineering management for 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 quite a long time. So this is would be the uh, the eighth or ninth year of the engineering management program, mm -hmm. um, and and I cannot speak for the uh, uh, for the, the development of the original program, but I've been involved uh, quite intensively the last three years with developing this new program, mm -hmm. uh, and we have been doing that uh, very much in uh, in dialogue with uh, with the industry, and mm -hmm. there are in the region uh, a number of uh, quite uh, well known what we refer to as engineering focused companies and we have been been in dialogue with these uh with these organizations and with their human resource people and the people actually hiring people there to see what are the actual requirements uh, of those who, who would uh, um employ the graduates of an engineering management program uh, so they were involved in the in the whole design phase uh then we have kind of developed this in an, in, in an iterative way, uh, attaching our different uh, advisory boards, which are people also in, in the same type of industries, people coming from these engineering uh, focused companies. Uh, so the program has been back and forth with industry uh, a number of times in order to, to secure um, uh, this relationship and this uh, understanding of the project uh, uh, within the industry. And um, then, I mean, when we actually deliver the program, it, we will also do that in quite a close collaboration with the industry. So we have live cases in, uh, in most of the courses. We do different visits to, uh, to, to, to companies and we try to do innovation uh, in real cases on real problems that we that we have in the industry so i would say it's uh, quite uh, quite um quite well uh, situated when, within the needs of, of of the industry then i mean and that's the second part of the of the question that you that you raised here is is the the relation to 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 research of course because it is after all, it is a master in engineering management. So it is a master program. Uh, and it's not only the, the kind of the, um, the accreditational bodies. We are also, of course, under state supervision, uh, which require us to put quite big emphasis on the research connection uh, with the program. So most of the, uh, the teachers, uh, uh, I mean, there, are, there will be teachers with a, with a more practical uh, kind of knowledge. But there will be our uh, our professors and our uh, uh, senior faculty involved in delivering this program, which kind of ensures that the balance between uh, research on one side and on um, uh, uh, on industry on the other hand uh, needs to be balanced. And I, I think what we uh, I mean this is what we do: we deliver uh, education balancing between these two. Uh, two demands that are placed upon us as a, as a higher education institution. Um, a common question which I uh, get from a lot of potential students is, uh, are there any internships or real projects they will work on? Yes. Uh, I mean, first of all, uh, in most of the modules or in all of the modules, except perhaps for the uh, um, uh, Except for the the master thesis module, uh, you can of course you can or most students will write their master thesis on a on on a real uh, kind of uh, real company case, uh, but it's not required. You could do it in in different ways, of course. But in all the other modules, there is the 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 focus on uh, solving kind of real uh, real practical problems uh, that would be. Uh, either given to us by the companies or identified in kind of close collaboration with the companies. Uh, so we will do visits to uh, to, 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 to engineering focused companies. Mm -hmm. They would provide us with, with things that they would like to, to know more about and that's what we will be working with. And that con is considered in all the modules uh, of the program. And then finally, it's the, the, the last module is an actual internship module uh where uh the focus would be on kind of identifying 
uh, what you have not learned in the program that you would require to, to know when you work in these organizations. Uh, so I think that we have a rather strong connection to, uh, to, to practice in that sense. That sounds amazing, actually. Um, and just connected to the same question, uh, are there any simulations as well uh, embedded into the modules uh, you have discussed? Um, we have a, a, a simulation as part of the introduction module, and, and this is, a, 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 I think simulations are interesting in, in, in many ways because we work with them in, 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 in management education. Mm -hmm. uh, what you would have, what you we could say is a simulation is that you would actually have kind of a, a it's a game, basically. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and these simulations then will let us be able to try to connect the different areas that we would have in 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 management. If you, I mean, some people are good with marketing, other with cost accounting, and when we set these things together, uh, we need to consider. You cannot only consider one part of of management. You need to consider all these parts, and that is actually something that we can do with the simulations. So we have a simulation, uh, uh, a business simulation uh, program that we use in in many of our educations here at Ibs and, and also in the engineering management program. It is a kind of an interesting tool uh, for both students and teachers, actually. And uh, um, uh, this will be part, uh, in this case, it will be part in the introduction module. Interesting. Um... Now, if we connect again to the same question, uh, we can, uh, I mean, uh, talking about teaching pedagogy, how do we inspire students to achieve the best results and gain upper hand from uh, the competition? Yes, I mean, the the the, the program uh, and the engineering management program is, and this is also relates to a question that I uh, get from a lot of people, uh, it is an on-campus program, so it is not an online program that we deliver here. So we will actually be here uh, and we will meet. So you will meet with your co-students. We work in uh, in different kind of uh, group settings uh, where we try to work with uh, with people from, from different backgrounds, with different cultural understandings and so on, uh, solving uh, problems together. So we, uh, I think there is a... Uh, the, the the teaching pedagogic uh, is uh, is is traditional in that sense. So it's an on campus based program where we actually meet. We have lectures, we have seminars, we have group discussions, we have different type of of uh, uh, of guest speakers coming in, and uh, and then we have a mix of 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 team examination uh, uh, and individual uh, examination. So it's. Uh, and I think that is a is 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 a real strength of the program. Actually, it is it's not an uh, it's not an online program where you don't meet people, where you sit listening to to different videos uh, of 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 different topics here. So it is a real program in that in that sense. We, we you you have spoken quite a bit about uh, the practicality and the connectivity of uh, this education with the industry uh, during the uh, time of your education. So how do we connect our students with the industry after they have graduated? Do we do we have any forums or activities where they get connected with them to find opportunities? Yes, we we actually have, and we have. Uh, I mean, we are working with a, a kind of a. a big number of different uh, ways how to do that actually we have a uh, um uh we have i mean people at the uh, at the at the, the jibs level who try to work with societal engagements trying to have guests here the the student union organized quite a lot of fairs where company come come here to present and and, and you're able to connect with people uh in that sense uh, we also have, and and this is uh, is part of what I have been working with um, uh, the last few years. I've been trying to work with uh, uh, with um, LinkedIn as a uh, kind of a format of of uh, trying to commute uh, promote kind of an engineering management from Jibs kind of community, mm -hmm. where. The current students are connected to the previous students or connected to future students then in one sense. 
Uh, and so, so what we are trying to build here is uh, 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 working with uh, with career guidance from 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 central functions. Uh, we also have, uh, uh, and that is a current ongoing pro project where we have uh, received a um, a kind of a, a, a web based. Uh, service uh, in connection with one of the accreditation bodies where people actually could uh, get career support uh, more or less uh, in an international setting where you upload your CVs and you can see different type of lectures and and uh, and so on so so we work with different uh, as a different sets of methods here and trying to to really get uh, people to to, uh, uh, to 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 find uh, work after graduation then and as a final point uh, regarding that we also always have uh, in the uh, in the program there is uh, uh, there is often or at least during the last uh, four years there's always been a group of students that are taking the program half time so they take the program half time while already being employed mm -hmm. in an engineering focused company often which would be also part of what what the other students the students who don't work simultaneously they will actually meet these people oh, and they yeah, will be used for two years yeah. so that's a that's another way to connect to uh to to uh, um, uh, to other organizations um in the for the future for the future work Thank you very much, uh, Ulf. It was a great uh, uh, discussion, uh, and thank you for your detailed um, answers on all these questions. So now what we can do is we can open the house for Q&A. Um, and so guys, please feel free to ask your questions. I start to see that they, the questions are not popping up. Um, so the first question is, um, um, from Nigeria, I would like to know the various scholarships that are available for international students. Well, what you can do is um, I can uh, drop an email address, uh, but you can also find that information on our web. Uh, so, but please uh, send me an email and I will give you direct links where you can read more about that. Um, As an international student going into the managerial role, a uh, role in which Swedish is important and someone who doesn't know Swedish, why one uh, should go for management in Sweden and how Jönköping University can help an international student in this situation? <laughs> I mean, uh, Jönköping University actually has, a, 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 I mean, uh, being, uh, uh, and I mean, this is something that we, we take pride in, uh, when, when they rank the, the, the most international uh, education experience that you can get in Sweden, well then, uh, uh, Jeeps ranks the highest. Uh, then, of course, as you uh, as you said, point out, the the knowledge of the Swedish language is quite important if you want to work in a in a, in in at least some Swedish organizations. I would say I'm I think that um, uh, uh, what we do provide are actually, uh, and some of our students take that are actually courses in Swedish. Yeah. Uh, so that you I, actually can practice uh, the, the language. I, I have one example from, um, she uh, was a Turkish student. Uh, she was studying in engineering management. She just finished her education. And now she's working in, uh, I think, uh, lid shopping uh, with some uh, engineering firm as quality control um manager uh so she is uh and she she didn't know swedish and she was super happy and uh, so what i what i also see a lot of a lot of firms um are also focusing on uh, more internationalization culture within their organization as well yes i think that's a good answer to that actually because uh, most of these uh, engineering focused companies they are highly international themselves uh, yeah. um, so the working language of, of many of those will also be English. And, and quite often of them have also projects, not just based in Sweden, but uh, around the world. They might be exporting to that technology or, or services to the other countries. So uh, Farid is saying thank you, dear friends, about this session. It was really helpful. <laughs>
Thank, thanks, Faith, for your kind uh, comment. My question is, how many admitted student applicants do you have annually for this program? So we actually have 60, uh, 60 places in the program. So, so we apply 60 students each year. What are the opportunities for someone who wants to go into research after master's in engineering management? Well, I think it's quite good, uh, good prospects of that. We have, um, we have currently here at JIBS, uh, as I know, uh, two PhD students who uh, have their master degree from the engineering management program. Uh, I, when I done uh, kind of backup research for the uh, the historical. Uh, cohorts of the program. I found uh, a few others uh, doing their um, uh, their PhD uh, in different in other universities. So I think it's. I mean, uh, if you want to continue into uh, research and writing a PhD, well, then a master program is a is a good is a good opportunity. Great. Um, Usman is asking. I've applied a bit late. What are the chances of getting in? So I'm a bit confused, Usman, here because if you I don't know if you have applied directly through our um, local admission or have you applied centrally? Uh, just so you know, Yonchibi University, you can apply both locally and centrally. Uh, send us an email. I've dropped the email address on the chat function. Um, I can help you with uh, uh, your question there because we still have time. The applications are still open uh, if you want to apply. Uh, through our uh, ju.se uh, website directly. So how long is the application time open for? Uh, it's until 2nd of May, actually. Uh, when, we, when we will get the admission confirmation, well, it usually takes about, uh, um, I would say, two to four weeks. Uh, because um, you will have to go through the interview as well. Um, and so the process usually takes this amount of time. So if you have just applied or uh, I would suggest you to be patient and then uh, wait for the results. Uh, have you ever worked with sports companies? I don't, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please uh, uh, expand a bit on that? I think, I mean, um, in Spain there are very few sports companies, I guess. Uh, but it's... Um, uh, well, please, please, uh, please expand yeah. a bit on that. But... I've applied centrally. Okay, good. Uh, then what I can say is if you're late over there, I strongly suggest you to make a local application directly to us. And then you can uh, send your documents uh, where you don't have to send. You can just upload the documents on our portal. Send me an email and I can look into your application as well and I can guide you um, properly. How are the op opportunities after engineering management outside of Sweden? I think uh, they must be pretty good anyways. <laughs> Yes, I mean, what we call uh, engineering focused companies are, uh, uh, I mean, it's <laughs> it, it, it's a rather broad term. Uh, it's, it's, it's perhaps not only kind of traditional manufacturing. I think that many of the kind of uh, tech companies or whatever you would refer to them as uh, are uh, uh, very similar in that sense, how they are organized and, and uh, um uh, so I think uh, I think that the engineering management is uh, uh, is of equal importance uh, everywhere around the globe, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Nathan is asking, can I have your personal email ID? I don't know if you're asking mine or if you're asking Dr. Olds, but uh, I think the best course of action would be that if you send us an email to study at ju.se, uh, that would be best because then uh, we would exactly know who to send that question to, and then we can uh, we can help you much better uh, that way. Um, how engineering management in Yonchipping University different from other management programs in other universities? Well, I think that's a, a question which has uh, more than one uh, more than one answer. I mean, 
first of all, it, it differs from other management programs as it's an engineering management program. So we actually take the top up uh, kind of approach here, uh, which is different from kind of general management programs that would build up during more years, uh, specifically in management. Uh, uh, yes, in management. Then, of course, uh, it differs from other management uh, uh, other engineering management programs because there are quite few of that, those as well and I think that the, the answer to that is that they differ because how we, we kind of leverage the strength of, 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 of jibs here actually so we do have a very strong uh, research profile in entrepreneurship uh, which as I said before gives us the, the kind of specialization in, in how we work with innovation and uh, we also have the the, the 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 specialization for internationalization here, which you probably will not find uh, in many other places, uh, especially not in Sweden. Uh, so, so in that sense, I think uh, there are differences. And we also try to work, as I said, uh, in, in, in close collaboration with, with, the, with the industry, which I also think is, uh, is a little bit unique, at least, uh, mm. because I think that uh, many uh, education institutions, they start from kind of internal needs rather than external needs. So I think uh, in that sense, it's uh, it differs. Uh, Hannah is asking, thank you for a very interesting and helpful webinar. Uh, absolutely, Hannah. Uh, thank you for your comment. My question is, how does the internship module work for students who already are employed in an in engineering company? Do you need to have a specific role under the internship or that is not necessary? It's a good question. It's a good question, of course. <laughs> and, uh, we are, uh, um, and I think, I mean, if, you're, uh, uh, if you are employed, we would accept internships for people to, to continue to work in, in the organizations that they are working uh, in. We would also accept internships if they want to start their own business, uh, if they want to try something different and so on. So we are quite flexible in terms of the, the internship part. But if you want to continue working where you're currently working, then we don't, I mean, it is an internship. What, what we require uh, for, for the internship uh, is, is basically, uh, I mean, so we need to know that you are there uh, and then we need to need you to perform certain tasks uh, which are basically related to reflection. So you need to hand in certain assignments uh, where you reflect upon what you're doing in your uh, in your current position. And then I think we cannot be uh, I mean, we don't make any distinction if you are working where you used to be working, because I think that was the question here. Yeah. Uh, so you, I mean, you can continue, but then you will have to uh, perhaps start thinking about the work that you do in a different, uh, in a different way, I guess. Uh, and that is what we require for the internship. Yeah, she can still produce a report on that uh, um, and still uh, get a tick mark on on that part. Yes. Um, well. Um... I have. I asked you, uh, have you ever worked with sports company? As my bachelor was on sports engineering, and also sports engineer can design and manufacture sports equipment and etc. Can I find opportunities through your program after graduation? Ah, mm -hmm. sports equipment. Yeah, that's a different. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, we don't have. I, I actually, I have. I. I, I I, I used to say that I have had engineers of uh, uh, basically starting at from from nuclear science on one side and <laughs> in architecture on the other side, uh, and I don't think that a, a sports engineering would be very different in that way. I mean, we could have engineers who work uh, basically coming from the uh, the medical sector where you would design, uh, well. Uh, equipment for people who, who who lack an arm or whatever so i think uh, sports uh, sports equipment uh, uh, and engineering i think that that is also areas which uh, would be i mean it's an it's an area which is similar to other engineering areas exactly. i mean it requires this focus on on innovation uh, it requires this kind of way of thinking where you interact with, with the market i would say uh, i mean it's uh, um, uh, i mean most sports equipment 
when you look at it, uh, what sports equipment was 20 years ago is very different today. Uh, many things are a lot lighter, they protect a lot better and so on. So I think that sports uh, sports engineering, they are, uh, it's not different than designing a car in that sense, mm. I would say. Great. Um, and thank you for, for your question. Um, is engineering management also good for someone with no prior work experience? <laughs> Yes, uh, I really think so, because it is, we provide a lot of uh, kind of connections with working life in that sense. And I would say that uh, uh, roughly 80% of the students who take the engineering management program does not have a uh, prior work life experience, especially not in uh, in engineering kind of uh, 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 engineering uh, heavy uh, work tasks in that sense. So it's it kind of qualified engineering work. Uh, so 80% coming directly from a bachelor without that kind of connection. And I, I think that they, uh, I think that they actually get a uh, uh, good value for, for the time spent also actually, yes. Fan is uh, just sending us good afternoon. Uh, welcome, Fan. You're most welcome. Uh, and uh, and someone is asking, uh, I'm in my final year uh, for computer science engineering. A am I eligible to this course? Well, uh, you will. You are if you are sure to finish your education before the start of this education, because we can give you a conditional offer uh, if you are in your last semester of your education. Um, it would be nice if you send me an email. If you're not so sure, I can look look into your documents and I can give you a suggestion based on that. But it's possible. Good. I think uh, that's uh, about it uh, for all the questions we had. Um, just one comment, guys. Um, we have uh, we require. Uh, I mean, of course, uh, there are different requirements to enter into um, um, engineering management, but one of the main requirements is also that we need to have your English uh, level tested, which is we either require I 6.5 or 90 TOEFL and some other kind of um, English tests are also eligible. But uh, to be able to uh, make sure that uh, um, even if you don't have those requirements fulfilled, if you have a level which is not achieved to the level which we require, then we do have pathway education uh, that can help you to uh, get to the same level and still get into engineering management or any other uh, education at the university. Um, so that is something that you can keep in mind. And if you are unsure how to get that information, again, please send us an email on study at ju.sc and we can help you with this. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining in today. Uh, thank you all for a great, valuable session. And thank you guys for attending today. And uh, remember, I will upload this video on our YouTube channel. So um, spread this video or watch it later. Thank you, everyone. And see you at the campus, perhaps. Bye-bye. Thank you for hosting. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.